ASM Fakhrul Islam, Doctor of Philosophy in Nuclear Engineering, presented by Dr. Travis Knight. These are the deans of the university. These are members of the board of trustees and special guests. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the University of South Carolina. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to one of the most important and festive traditions of our university, the December 23 doctoral hooding ceremony. Please remain standing as the USC faculty brass quintet accompanies our soloist, Benjamin Stogner, a candidate for the Doctor of Musical Arts degree, as he signs our national anthem. Let us pray. Giver of every good gift, you have brought us to this day of celebration, sparking the creativity and caring of our faculty in classrooms, labs, offices, and meetings. You have ignited the passionate support and assistance of parents and trustees, grounds crews and cleaning staffs, food service workers and security, study partners, tutors, and friends. 
And we know that you have been with this class of students through their first days trying to find their classrooms, through early morning classes and late evening ones, through the twists and turns of discernment and into this day. Unite us together on this festive day. Inspire us to listen for your wisdom in the words of our speakers and to give thanks and praise as we applaud these graduates. Amen. Thank you, Benjamin, and thank you to the USC faculty brass quintet and the reverend. Would please be seated. It is always a great privilege for me to take part in the hooding of our doctoral degree candidates. I know what this day means to all of you, and I'm honored to share it with you. It is your day of celebration with your families and friends, and I'm honored to be here to share this special day with you. So let's celebrate. Let's make some noise. As I have the opportunity to be the first one saying today, congratulations to the doctoral class of 2023. Come on, make some noise, that's better. <laughs> All right, how do you really feel is the question. You proved it, that's wonderful. Your ceremony is marked by time-honored rituals and traditions. It will bestow upon you the highest academic achievement that is confirmed by any American university. To get to this day, you have invested long hours, days and nights, and you have earned a place among a select group of peers. Today, we congratulate you for your commitment and perseverance in the pursuit of your academic goals and the pursuit of knowledge, and we celebrate your success. In the past 20 years, not one of his students has failed the defense of their oral research plan. Dr. Myrick, we look forward to your remarks today, knowing you represent the hundreds of creative and supportive graduate faculty members who work every day to support, mentor, and develop graduate students at the University of South Carolina. I'd like to thank uh, Dean Vail for her invitation to speak to you today. I offer my heartfelt congratulations to all of you for your achievement and um, also to all your loved ones for their achievement today as well. You have the potential for long and impactful careers in your fields of scholarship. The faculty hope that you can help humanity gain a better understanding of itself and the universe and can turn that better understanding to the benefit of the only world that we presently know to bear life anywhere in the cosmos. It surely needs you. You could call this presentation Living Scholarship. Having sat there many times with my own uh, new doctoral students, I know you're gonna enjoy this because it's going to be brief. <laughs> <clears throat> You'll remember that the undergraduate program is cyclic repeats every semester, football season, to basketball season, to baseball season, over and over. Undergraduate days are a time loop, like in the movie Groundhog Day. But graduate school's been different. In graduate school, everyday life begins the slow grind forward in concert with scholarship. Everyday life becomes scholarship, becomes career becomes everyday life. Seminars, relocations, outside activities, teaching and research, publications and presentations, marriages and divorces, births and deaths, ideas and anxieties and stresses and happiness. They're not cyclic and they happen around you and to you in unexpected ways and they all influence and contribute to who you are as a scholar and a person. In graduate school, work and the state of our chosen fields move with the arrow of time. We're not allowed to stand still. We're always looking for the new idea, 
or the new understanding. And we grow until at some point we ourselves morph into independent scholars. We start to see others using our work as a starting point for their own. When that happens, advisors and graduate students become colleagues. They evolve. And it's that evolution that's really the thing we're celebrating today. Your value as a new scholar isn't that you have a doctorate. It's everything you did to deserve it. You have learned, understood, interpreted, applied, extended, invented, and communicated. These are the practices of scholarship. Professional athletes don't stop practicing when they make the big leagues, and professional scholars don't stop practicing scholarship when they graduate. I don't know your specific journey to this point, but I know that you're in one of life's liminal spaces, poised between what you've worked hard to know well and the unknown yet to come. You're poised between the knowledge of the past and that yet to be learned. Between an older generation, <laughs> and the next generation, to whom you will pass your new understandings. We're excited for you in part because you're an extension of our own scholarship and we all want to learn along with you. Here's some advice for your life as a scholar based on things that I've learned in my years of teaching and research. As you accept the doctoral hood that you've worked toward, realize that you have a special power now to affect others. And that entails responsibility to this world and to the people in it. Everyone in the community of, scho of scholars has specialized gifts, and you should recognize that. You should respect them, even when their gifts and their interests are not the same as your own. And this is just a special subset of showing respect and consideration to others in general. Be generous in your teaching of others, because whether you realize it or not, others will be learning from you. Be generous in your mentoring of others, because whether you realize it or not, you will be a role model for those around you. Write and speak simply and clearly so you can be understood by your audience because good communication makes your scholarship a gift to others. I also recommend that you relax. <clears throat> a little anxiety is good and normal, but in excess it keeps us from sleeping and thinking straight. Heightened anxiety rarely manifests as a positive change in your world or in our world. For now, over the holidays, stop worrying about your future just for a bit and give time to your families. You've been carrying their hopes and their dreams and speaking as a parent, I'm sure that they feel words are too few and too poor to fully express how close to their hearts you are. If you heed one piece of advice that I give you today, heed this one. Give time and attention to those people who've carried you to this point and tell them how much you appreciate them. Today is not too late to do it, nor is it too early. Today, understand this, today is the best day. My central message to you is that scholarship is not one more priority among your many other priorities. It's both an approach and the fruits of that approach. It may reorder your priorities, because scholarship involves seeing the world in a new light and sharing it. But waking each morning with the sense that this new day is the best day to see and to share, to me, that is living scholarship. Thank you. 
ASM Fakhrul Islam, Doctor of Philosophy in Nuclear Engineering, presented by Dr. Travis Knight.